Greetings. How's everyone doing? Yeah, fantastic. Excellent. Who here feels vibrant? Yes? No, maybe so. Who here feels vital in their body, completely in their body right now? Can I get an amen? Is there anyone here that won't raise their hand no matter what I say? Yeah. My name is Ronnie Landis, and I have a short amount of time with you guys, and so usually I'm doing like two or three hour lectures, so I'm going to kind of nail in the, the point of what I want to share with you um, as succinctly and uh, as quickly and also as fun as, as I possibly can in the time we have here. And the talk of the, 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 the title of this talk is Cutting Edge Nutrition, Radiant Health, and Longevity. First of all, does that even sound good? Yeah? Okay, so you guys resonate with that. Great. And those are very specific terms that I use to describe this particular talk. Because I'm not really interested in health. Like the word health. Is that exciting? Does that like get you up out of your seat? Like, I'm going to be healthy. It's like, to me, health is just a natural byproduct of being happy and in harmony and being alive. Like, we should all just be healthy just because, right? Because we won the lottery and we, are, we were incarnated into this planet, into these physical bodies. Like, health is just a byproduct of that. And yet, as a society, we have normalized sickness and disease and degeneration and brain fog and hormone disruptions and arthritic conditions, osteoporotic conditions, the breakdown of the human frame in our neurological capacities over time, we have normalized that, right? That's become a state of normality. So we have this whole industry called the health industry that is attempting to sell us things to get something back that we were born with. Does that make sense? Does that idea make sense? A little bit of a paradigm shift, and that's kind of what my work is all about, is actually interrupting the pattern, interrupting the program. I remember the first time my program was interrupted, not the first time, but one of the times when I was working in an emergency room in Oakland at this hospital called Summit Hospital, and I was working there because I was supplementing my athletic career. I was a semi-professional athlete in Taekwondo and also in basketball for a point in my life. And I was only working there just as a financial supplement. I didn't really know that that would be a seed that would lead to my destiny. That would lead me to the work that I do in the world. Or to becoming an orator. To becoming a voice for a message and a message that needs more voices, right? I had no idea until the first time I started taking in 64 ounces of green vegetable juice. That was a moment in time that I will never forget. Because what happened was that all my dormant capabilities and, and superhero powers and, and possibilities and potentials as a human being became awoken inside of me. All it was was just one green juice. That was it. But that's how it started. And then from there, every single nagging injury I ever had as an athlete, I ever had, I've broken my body down so many times. I've had two knee surgeries. I've had broken bones, three broken noses. I mean, broken toes, arms, the whole thing. And you know what's crazy? I'm 31 years old now, and I can perform just as well in the gym or on the basketball court or in the martial arts studio as I did when I was 21, working out three times a day. And I don't work out that much anymore. You know, I do my training, I do my weights, I still entertain athletic pursuits for fun, but that's not my dharma, that's not like my mission in life anymore. And what's interesting is that as I get older, I seem to be getting younger. Right? That's a pattern interrupt. That's, a, that's injecting into the program of mediocrity. 
which is this whole thing around health. It's like we, we, are, we are kind of in a straitjacket of mediocrity as a society, as a collective, not necessarily us, but speaking, speaking as part of the human race, we've adapted to the lowest common denominator. As my mentor, Michael Bernard Beckwith says, that lowest common denominator is called mediocrity, and we have elevated that mediocrity to be the standard in which we live our life, otherwise known as the standard American diet. I want to propose an idea here because it was so powerful for me and it shifted my life and it shifted my dharma, it shifted my destiny on this earth and it's the reason I do what I do now. And that was a Vedic, um, a Sanskrit quote I learned from the Hindu language, which was the subtle energies of your food become your mind. Let me say that one more time. The subtle energies of your food become your mind. Terence McKenna, the great ethnobotanist and philosopher, he had a great quote. He said that a person's personality is largely a reflection of their diet. Now, by the way, I'm not really into diets. I mean the word die, it. Has anyone ever seen this? Have you ever picked this apart? There's a word die in it. Does anyone get that? Does that like land anywhere? It's an energetic discrepancy. If everything is vibration and everything physical 3D material is just a conglomerate of atomic and subatomic particles that all start to associate together and create what we call form, then it's all based on some kind of vibrational resonance. And I'll tell you what, the word diet does not resonate with me. I don't know about anyone else, but what does resonate is like, oh, live it. Like, I'm going to live it. You know, like when you make a decision in your life, and you're like, you know what? I'm going to live it. That's what I'm into. Because diet and nutrition, I love, I'm so happy everyone here, all the doctors and everyone here speaking and everything, but I got a different message. I'm not, I'm not just talking about food. Food is a, is, a, is a pathway. Raw food, for me, was a pathway. It wasn't about creating a religion out of food and glamorizing food and a whatever, a vegan lifestyle, vegetarian lifestyle. I'm all about it. But really, that's just an activation point for a potential of what your life can be. That's why I love nutrition. That's why I chose to devote my entire life Every bit of my energy is invested into the study, research, and application of cutting-edge nutrition. Because I, because really what I am, beyond a nutritionist, is a human potential specialist. I am curious about what is the capability of a human being when they're completely activated, when they've removed all the blocks, when they've lifted the straitjacket of mediocrity in their life, what is possible for a human being then? And we sometimes call that detoxification. Whoever, who here has ever detoxed before, right? Right? Things come up and then come out, like liquid plumber. Has anyone had this experience before? Who here has ever done a colonic? Okay, so I'm going to make a recommendation for everybody sitting here is that you go schedule your first colon hydro therapy session. It may be the most powerful thing you ever do in your life. I mean, literally, I, I've had people when I was living in Hawaii, I was doing lectures every single week at this permaculture farm, and there was a colon hydrotherapy specialist. No joke. I've seen people that have been into theology for 20 years that have been into religion, and, and they've devoted their life to Christ, and they've never caught the Holy Ghost until they had their first colonic. <laughs> Liquid plumber, once you get all that stuff out of you that's been impacted into your intestinal tract, and you start to remove the plug out of the, the, this tub, and all that stuff starts to come out of you, you will be astonished. You will be mesmerized at what happens up here. 
Yeah, I think the last the last doctor was talking about there's something about the brain, the the uh, gut brain connection, right? What do we know in psychotherapy is that your gut, your gut environment, otherwise known as your microbiome, otherwise known as your biological garden. What do you do with the garden? Do you desecrate it? No, you gotta you gotta fertilize it. You gotta take care of it, right? Well, your microbiome is the communication center of your entire physical frame or your physiology. 80% of your serotonin is produced in your gut. 80% of your immune system is produced in your... Hello? Hello? Uh, anyone out there? Yay. Okay. And crowd participation is encouraged from time to time, just so you know. That's really important to know because imagine, before you came here, you didn't know that. So you're constantly taking SSRIs, selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors. You're on antidepressants. Your doctor's pushing all this on you. The fear trigger, the fear machine. You gotta take this, you gotta take this, we gotta cut this out, we gotta radiate this, we gotta chemotherapy this, whatever. And you didn't even know that most of what's going on up here starts from down here. Now, I'm gonna propose a crazy idea to all of you. Bear with me here, sit with this. Is it possible that what we put in our mouth has some kind of effect on what's going on up here? Is it possible? No, of course not. You go to your doctor's office and they're just like, you ask them like, you know, doctor, I don't know, I'm going out on a limb here, but do you think that this condition might have anything to do with what I put in my mouth, with my diet? No, no, absolutely not. But take these pills and put them in your mouth. I don't know, it's crazy. Anyways, so cutting edge nutrition, let's dive into that. What does that mean? What is that? Let me tell you a little secret that you may or may not be aware of right now. There is a revolution going on in the food industry. There is a revolution going on in our perception of what nutrition is and what this body needs to operate at peak efficiency. Because I'm, I'm a peak performance coach. I grew up as a, a performance athlete. And now I'm, I'm like a brain athlete. I'm interested in like, how can I take a book and go through it as quickly as I can and also retain every bit of information that's relevant to me. How can I filter out everything that's not relevant and learn, basically turn accelerated learning on its head? 10x that. Who in here would love to read a book in a day and actually remember what they read? Who here's read a book and they can't even remember what, what they, they even picked up? Who here fell asleep halfway through? Who here uses a book as a sleeping aid? Yeah. What if everything we were sold was just a program? And what if we were just programmed? And if that's the case, what if we can reprogram by deprogramming and uploading new software? And you know what that software is? It's two things. You are what you think about is number two. You are what you eat is number one. Because everything that's going on up here is being affected by what you're putting in your mouth. And that's why I defer to living food. Living plant-based food. For a number of reasons. For so many reasons. A, because it changed my life. The first time I started doing 64 ounces of green vegetable juicing, cucumber, celery, ginger, turmeric, cilantro, adding in like spirulina powder to actually get real protein for the first time in my life. Can you imagine that in your whole life you've grown up with this whole like protein theory? Like you that some random carving of some animal's musculature that probably was loaded with every type of antibiotic, hormone-induced therapy. Like animals are basically getting hormone replacement therapy. Estrogen therapy is basically what's happening. 
and every single other crazy thing we know that's going on in that industry. And you thought your whole life that that was protein. And then you stop doing that for a little while. You go and have one of these green vegetable juices. You have two tablespoons of spirulina powder. And for the very first time in your life, you just had real protein. Imagine what that does to your brain. Imagine what that does to your, your tissue, your connective tissue. Imagine what that does to your kidneys. Does anyone know the number one reason for kidney disease in the world? Excess animal protein. Nitrogenous protein. Undigestible, chemically altered, heat volatile protein. That's a big realization when you realize, like, wow, I've been sold a program. I never even had protein ever a day in my life. Oh, my goodness. What else am I unaware of? Cutting edge nutrition, the revolution. It's basically, this is what it is, just to, just to ma maximize the little bit of time we have. We've been living in a nutritional holocaust our whole life. That's the, that's the bottom line. It's amazing to me, actually, that human beings are still walking, talking, thinking, running for office. I mean, it, it's actually astonishing to me. And yet it tells me something that Whatever got us in the predicament that we're in, we can pull ourselves out. Has anyone read the book Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill? Amazing, seminal work in personal transformation. One of the quotes in that book was, whatever the mind of man can conceive and believe, it can be. So we got to get this thing. we got to start exercising this thing up here. And then another thing was, built into the seed, or built into every problem, is the seed of its very solution. Whatever problem you are, you're experiencing in your life, the solution is right there with it. There's no problem without the solution. That's the greatest lesson I ever learned. Because I, I mean, when I have somebody on death's door show up on my door, stage three, stage four cancer, and they're just been beaten by doctors and dentists and even naturopaths and people selling them all kinds of stuff that they don't need and it's just making things worse, they're jaded. They're like, help me. I need help. And they don't realize, like, hey, you know what? The problem, the problem, yes, it's a big problem, but the solution is closer than you think. You're only a millimeter off, and you have to change this thing up here. And oftentimes that happens naturally by changing what you put into the mouth. So let me, let me return back to the point here. Basically what cutting edge nutrition looks like this, I'll lay it out for you right now. It's living food nutrition as a three-part category. There's three primary categories to this. Living plant nutrition. What am I talking about? I'm talking about fruits, vegetables, nuts, seeds, fermented foods, seaweeds, otherwise known as sea vegetables, edible flowers, roots, tubers, you know, that kind of thing. You know, the stuff that our grandparents were into, right? That's not too much of a stretch, is it? Living food to displace and push out all the toxic crap that we've loaded ourselves up with, the best way, I'm going to tell you this as a professional, the number one way to cleanse yourself, to reset your metabolism of all the obstructions that we've ever put into our body, the number one way is to get on a living foods lifestyle, right? In addition with obviously yoga and and your fitness routine, working out, infrared saunas, that kind of thing, certain supplements, all that. We can go into all that right now, right? But a living foods lifestyle, because you got to get more life force. you got to be able to get life back into your body. And then from there, your inner physician starts to turn on, and your body starts to heal itself. And then you can go about the business of just living your life without being distracted by inflammation and chronic aches and woes and brain fog and digestive disturbances and being weighed down by your health condition. That's a distraction. The next part is superfood nutrition. And this is really, at this point, in my experience over the last decade of doing this, 
is that superfood nutrition is actually the real nutrition. Like living foods is amazing, it's absolutely critical, and on top of that, superfood nutrition is where we're actually going to get our real nutrition that, we're re that we were deprived of for like three generations. Right, what do I mean by that? Uh, things like spirulina, chlorella, marine phytoplankton, the number one source for omega-3 fatty acids that protect the brain, that shield the nerve fibers in our, in our nervous system from rancid oils and oxidation that protect us from neurological decline and actually are heart protective omega-3 fatty acids. Where's the best source? Is it fish oil? You wanna know a secret about fish oil that nobody told you? Fish oil is not really, well, let me phrase it this way. Fish don't make their own fish oil. Has anyone heard this before? Does anyone know that? No one's ever heard that. We grew up like fish oil. That's, that's what we're supposed to be taking. But fish don't even produce their own endogenous oil in their liver. They concentrate it from krill. Krill are like little shrimp-like crustacean creatures that are more abundant on the earth than, than you know, almost ants, right? And that's a better source of omega-3 oils. But then, down the food chain, where does krill get its oil? Does anyone know? Plankton, phytoplankton, marine phytoplankton. In my opinion, in my experience, I've done all this stuff in mega doses. Marine phytoplankton is the best omega-3 supplement on in the game. Because that's where every other creature gets their omega-3s. That's where 90% of the oxygen being produced in our biosphere comes from. From the plankton, it's the source of all nutrition up the food chain. So we just have to reverse engineer. Where does the cow get its food from? Where does the bison get its food from? Where does the grass go? Blah, 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 all the way down. And then it comes down to plankton. We're also talking about stuff like aloe vera. Aloe vera, the great treasure of the Egyptian civilization, one of the best digestive aids, one of the best things to actually seal up the intestinal lining that gets, that gets, in, uh, it gets wedged open by things like gluten and gliadin. I think I saw some like booth out here talking about unhealthy vegan and glamorizing it. I'm like, whoa, okay, that, I mean, yeah, if you want leaky gut, go ahead, eat all the gluten you want. You know what I'm saying? We've all heard this, right? This is a big issue. Autoimmune conditions, they're derived typically from a leaky gut situation where your intestinal lining has basically been wedged open. And whole proteins are seeping through that lining into your blood and causing an immunological reaction that otherwise known as an autoimmune issue, right? I just want to put that out there. Aloe vera gel is one of the best things for coating over the intestinal lining. It's amazing topically. I've never seen anything to heal a wound, a burn, a scar quicker than applying aloe vera gel on it and then saran wrapping it for, you know, maybe 12 hours. Beyond that, I will say this. I know it's taboo. Bee products. Bee products. This is an interesting one. I'm, and I'm going straight based on research. I'm going based on actually knowing bee farmers who love their bees, who treat their bees better than a lot of people treat their kids. Like there's a great book called The Shaman, like it's like um, Bee Shamanism or something. Great book to check out, just for, especially for every vegan. I'm not saying you need to do that. I'm just saying we need to have the right perspective. We need to have a wider perspective so we understand we understand that some things that we're fighting against sometimes are actually really powerful medicine. Bee pollen, for example. Do you know bee pollen is totally vegan? Is anyone confused about that? Like bee pollen is actually a vegan product. Why is it vegan? Because it, it doesn't, it's not, it's not produced by, by bee. It's, it's actually flower pollen. 
That's basically what it comes from flowers, right? And also bee pollen, by the way, is one of, it might be the most nutritionally dense food in the world next to something like spirulina, right? I mean, that can supply you, and that tiny, minute amount can supply you so many phytonutrients, B vitamins, amino acids. It's almost like amino acid therapy. If somebody has a neurological condition, what's the number one thing they need? They gotta clean up their microbiome, but they also need amino acid therapy. Free form amino acids to rebuild their neurochemistry, their neurotransmitters, because all the protein that they ever got was cooked, broiled, fried, destroyed. And those amino acids, by the way, like tryptophan, which builds your serotonin receptors, is heat volatile. Say again. Tryptophan gets destroyed upon contact. What else comes from serotonin? Melatonin. What's melatonin? Helps you go to sleep at night. Beyond that, there's dimethyltryptamine, DMT. So that helps you have colorful dreams at night. And some other fun stuff you might be into. So I just was alerted that I have, what, five, four minutes? Okay, so what I'd love to do here, um, I think I've ranted and raved long enough, right? So I'm gonna round, I'm gonna, I'm gonna complete this, this circle as we didn't have as much time as I'd love to have with all of you. The next thing is tonic herbalism. I have to get this piece in. Tonic herbalism is so critical for all of us to understand. The Chinese Taoist immortals, the Chinese Taoist philosophers and alchemists and sages and herbalists, the Ayurvedic herbalists, the Amazonian herbalists, all these amazing cultures in the world categorized a set of plant medicines that we call tonic herbs. And we have been given a gift by the ancients that we can basically create a raw food, superfood, tonic herbal lifestyle that was never, ever, ever available to human beings ever in human history. The one underlining principle that I think is more important about this whole conversation than anything is the simple fact that for the first time in human history, we can actually choose our nutrition strategy. Do you guys get that? Nod your heads if you actually understand what I just said. Never, ever before has a human culture been able to actually choose what they wanted to eat. That's the reason we can be vegan. It's the reason we can be vegetarian. It's the reason people can be paleo. Because they actually have the choice. They're not subject to the straitjacket of their circumstances or their environment. We have such overwhelming abundance that we almost don't even know what to do with ourselves. So what I'm trying to attempt to convey to you is that let's fill in the holes. Let's not be complacent. Let's not give it to boredom. Let's fill in the holes with the best food ever and then see what that does. Because I know I grew up eating the most goobity goppity food under imaginable by, human, by the human mind. Right? Microwave cheese in a bowl with like sausage as pepperoni. And I call that cheese bowl or pizza bowl or something. I actually did that. And I'm still alive. Right? So we are in a really interesting point in our history. We're in a really interesting point in our life that we have the option to come here and hear a message like this. My plea with all of you is that you take one or two or three or four or five things that I said here that resonated with you and you internalize it. Don't just let it go over you. Take it in. Put it in. Embody it. Take action. Because whatever you think is possible for your life is a pale approximation compared to what's really possible. The results of your past do not have to be the results of your future. You can change yourself. And that's what I wish for every single person here and every, every person I ever come in contact with my work. So uh, thank you so much. And so you know, I am going to, this is my book right here, The Holistic Health Mastery Program. After seven years of writing, it just got released a couple months ago. And I have a few copies available. I am gonna go over to the, um, after I, maybe I'll wrap up with a few questions or something. I'm gonna go over to the, um, the book signing booth, which is labeled like photo booth. 
just so you know. And I'll be over there. It's like right outside on the left. You know, take the first left right out there. And if you want to talk to me over there, if you want to get a copy of the book, I'd love to sign it for you and, um, you know, wrap with you for a little bit. And then the last thing I want to say before I leave is that I have, um, I have an online holistic nutrition certification course that I created many years ago and um, is touching people all over the world. It's a nutrition certification program where we go to the depths of, I mean, I'm only scratching a little bit of the surface right now. We go to the depths of integrative nutrition, whole food, living food, superfood, herbal nutrition, how to balance your hormones naturally, how to protect yourself from all forms of dis-ease, and so much else. If you guys are interested in that, I, that program is usually uh, $1,250 as a one-time payment. You get to keep that for your whole, you get to keep that indefinitely, by the way. That, that's a program, there's no time limit. You keep that, the, the value is incredible. But I'm going to offer it to everybody sitting here for one-time payment of $600. So if you wanna, if that resonates with you, only do something because it resonates, right? Don't be talked into anything. If something resonates with you, that's an impulse to, to do something about it. If it resonates with you, I'd love to talk to you about that. And beyond that, thank you so much for your time. Uh, I, had, I had a great time. So thank you. Yeah, just fire. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I thought this was an important question. We needed to go off a lot. I love Q&A, by the way. Oh, say again? I love Q&A. Okay. It's my favorite um, part. On the topic of living vegan, like live food, the, the program you're talking about, I'm just curious what your thought is around, okay, there's like the living live food, and then there are a lot of products right now, especially on the vegan market, like sure. protein powders and like dehydrated stuff. So are you sure. getting really the same nutrition from like, you know, really high quality organic, but it's like powdery, like sure. dried up stuff and like bolts. It's basically beers. dehydrated powders, yeah. right? So what are the quality to. differences and are you, are you sure. getting the same Sure, it's a fantastic question. He's basically asking me, what's the deal with all the dehydrated powders out there? Do they actually supply you with real nutrition or is it a, you know, is it bunk? That's what I got out of that question. And that's a great question, important one, because it's a half and half. There are a lot of products out there modeling themselves as like a superfood or like a protein powder and stuff. And when you get into this industry, and you kind of trace things back, and you find out some things, you're like, wow, like, there's a lot of marketing going on, and there's a lot of people out there cutting corners, and that kind of sucks. But then on the flip side, there's a lot of people who are doing it right, that are dotting their I's and crossing their T's. Raw Revelations is such a company, and that's why I work with them. If you've seen me at any of the last conferences that I've spoke at, I, I work with them. I don't have any share in their company. I don't have anything to do with them other than the fact that I am close friends with the owner, they let me rant and rave in the booth and educate people, and then they and then I get to support them because they're one of the only companies that I'm actually fully behind. Because they understand superfood nutrition, they understand raw food nutrition, they understand tonic herbalism, and they also understand natural supplementation. They have all those bases covered and they're doing an amazing job. So if you haven't been to the Raw Revelations booth, I recommend that you check it out over there. I'll be back over there, it's, you know, like 40 minutes or something after the book signing. But you go talk to Colin and you tell him Ronnie sent you. And I'm sure it might even hook you up to something. And they're doing herbal tonics and superfood smoothies and all that kind of stuff. So now, let me just hit your question real quick. Basically, yes. The answer is yes, but there's a strategy. You don't just eat powders, right? Here's a principle of nutrition is hydration, right? Those, those quote unquote superfood powders, if you want to call it that, are basically nature's answer to supplementation. Because you're taking an, a, a whole food and you're putting it through an extraction process to concentrate the bioavailable constituents of that food 
and then you're taking it in like a supplement, but there's no hexane extraction, there's no preservatives, there's no chemicals, flavor agents, genetically engineered, anything, right? It's 100% food. It's in a form that your body can actually take. And I'm going to tell you something, if you do this for like a year, like you add in one superfood smoothie into your Livix once a day for lunch, you're going to experience some changes. Your metabolism is going to change. You want to know what my diet looks like right now after like 10 years of doing this? I eat once a day, if that. I fast all day long on water. And then I might have like a little tonic or tea or something. I, I basically only eat for entertainment at this point. It's amazing. And I figured out it's because of living foods, it's because of cleansing and detoxing, it's because of superfood nutrition, and it's because of tonic herbalism and being hydrated. Every morning when I wake up, and I recommend that you do the same thing, you drink one liter of the best quality water that you got, and you add in some sea salt in that thing to, to fuel your adrenal glands. And then from there, your whole hydrological cycle, meaning your, your body's hydrational system, will start kicking on. You're not going to be as hungry as you were. You're not going to be craving all these like pastries and carbohydrates and stuff like you were before. The reason people are craving these things is, A, they're dehydrated. There's a great book called Your Body's Many Cries for Water by Dr. Batman Galich, who basically says that most people are reaching out for food, but they're really thirsty. So that's number one. Number two is getting high amounts of superfood nutrition because we have been in a nutritional holocaust. So we have to make up for three generations of epigenetic shortage. So hopefully that answers your question. Okay, is time. No more, okay. I think, I think she's going to pull out the cane on me pretty soon. Yeah? Okay. Thank you guys so much. Still going?